It's a long, long way from Los Angeles to Wolverhampton. <laughs> and Ed has literally come here to Wolverhampton to see his show. And I think that it would be right to speak for him when he says that the show looks beautiful, distinguished, and I think you like it a lot, don't you, Ed? I love it. <laughs> <laughs> it's also wonderful to have Bob Monk with us, who's been a friend of Ed's for 40 years, and um, somebody that I've known for 30, 40 years, first to do with Jasper Johns, and now with Ed Ruscha. And so it's lovely to have him here with us. And what we thought of doing is this. <coughs> First of all, if you don't like something, or you disagree, or you want to say something, shout out. <laughs> this is, you know, this is amongst friends, and you, you can interrupt us or <coughs> ask a question that you might regret afterwards if you never do it. <laughs> well, we're just going to look around the show and talk a little bit about Ed's work and ask him a few questions. And um, you know what we did with artist rooms? We put together 50 rooms uh, of uh, contemporary art with some 20, 23 artists. And that they belong to the Tate and the National Galleries of Scotland in trust for the nation. So that is everybody in this room. All the works of art you see here actually belong literally to you. So you can feel proud and happy about them if you love them as we do. And uh, the first time we worked with this beautiful and bright girl, <laughs> Zoe Lippert, was on an Ed Ruscha show, and <coughs> was, a, was on a Warhol show, and it was such a joy and such a wonderful experience working with her that the moment that was over, we kept saying to her, hey, what about an Ed Ruscha show? Wouldn't that be the best thing in the world? And here we are, 18 months later, and <laughs> it's a <laughs> joyful thing for us all. Um, we're standing in front of a special painting, um, what is called a metro plot. Um, and it's a very Los Angeles painting. Um, and maybe if we ask Ed nicely, he would be kind enough to tell us about the Metroplots, how they came about, and what they mean for him. All right, is that my cue? <laughs> <laughs> <That's it. laughs> as long as you don't ask me to explain it, I'll, I'll say something about it. But. Um, Anyway, this, this came at a period, uh, what year was this painting done? 1990? Uh, when I was thinking about being above the city and looking down on the city from a particular or peculiar angle. And, um, and I, always, I always liked oblique views of things. And so this is sort of grew out of that, of, of uh, uh, taking an oblique view of something and and making it into something that is somewhat anonymous. That this could be any boulevard, avenue, or street in the world, and so it's uh, it it's my way of making something universal. I guess that's not an explanation. It's just <laughs> talking about it. <laughs> Ed, I think. Um, one of the series of paintings that I've always found most moving are the mountain pictures. When did they first come into being? When did you start to paint mountains? Well, maybe in like the late 1990s. I had a, a notion to make, make pictures by, uh, by using words and presenting them in some way. And it seemed like a mountain was a, uh, an archetypal stage set. It was a, um, a perfect foil for whatever was happening in the foreground. So, Ed, I, I, I'm, I'm getting whispers in my ear to ask you about the lettering of these pictures, <laughs> where that comes from. 
Well, as anybody knows who's ever tried to make letter forms, if you try that to curve, you know, the curves are the tough things. Okay. The tur curves are really tough. So I was set about it to invent something that would be easy to make and be made up of all straight lines. So I kind of imagine that um, um, if someone asked uh, if they were having a telephone company picnic for the year and they picked out somebody to make the poster for the picnic, that's the kind of lettering the person would come up with. <laughs> and so I've, I've kind of, I call this uh, Boy Scout Utility Modern. <laughs> and this, this phrase here kind of reminded me also of the uh, Popeye and Wimpy in Popeye would always, Wimpy loved hamburgers. And he said, uh, but he never had any money, but he would have a way of getting hamburgers out of people. So he would say, I'd gladly pay you Wednesday for a hamburger today. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this, this kind of grew out of that, pay nothing until April. And Ed, tell us how it is that hope gets murkier as it uh, progresses from left to right. Could be some truth in it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and also I just, uh, I like the way uh, paint can splash sometimes. And, um, and it just seemed to uh, materialize. It, it almost painted itself. About the color, I'm not, I, I, uh, I spend as little time agonizing over colors as I possibly can, but sometimes I think, see things that are closer to black and white than, that, than other times, and, and then other times <laughs> I'll see them with vibrant colors. So this is just an example of the former, and that's, that's kind of it. Uh, Right over there is one of my favorite works of all time, some pretty eyes and some electric bills. I always thought that that was a very good definition of marriage. <laughs> is that what you were thinking about? No, no I wasn't. <laughs> and I can't really say what I was thinking about except I wanted two subjects to be very, very far apart and, uh, and maybe that could be the definition of marriage. Well, <laughs> Two subjects that are very far apart. <laughs> uh, these other works, um, I always, uh, I, I've been sort of aggravated before by people who say, artists who say they make pieces rather than pictures or sculptures. And, uh, and so the, the word has always sort of made me scratch my palms. And I thought, I better get it down in a picture. <laughs> and the one over here is artists who make books. That's another uh, uh, thing that I thought I should make official by making a drawing out of it. Uh, and uh, that's, yeah. Ed, can I ask you about um, these rooftop photographs? Um, were these taken in an area of town where you first had your studio? Or did no, you I, have I, uh, access to the? I uh, was doing uh, like commercial layouts at this advertising agency that was uh, in a building on Beverly Boulevard and this was the top of the building. I went up there to have lunch and took my camera with me. So these are photographs that I, I turned the camera around and uh, began to study the, the landscape in this way. It's changed quite a bit in, uh, in these years. Would you say some of those houses and things are like gone now? They're either gone or they're like McMansions. behind trees <laughs> or McMansions, yeah. These are interesting too because, you know, when you first started dr your drawings, uh, you would say that a lot of your drawings came from the idea of tabletop photography. And even though these are of the landscape, they always reminded me of tabletop kind of photographs. Well, they do, and uh, so metro plots uh, and uh, this kind of uh, oblique aerial view of things that uh, seemed important to me at the time and, and still is part of my makeup as an artist. 
Um, I think maybe the Hollywood sign might actually be in this picture somewhere. Uh, here it is. Oh, yeah. yeah, right there. Um, um, That's a great series. Yeah. Uh, and what about the final end there? Are there some well, scratches on the Well, that's, uh, that's also a, uh, a nod to, the, to a movie in a way. And uh, I always like the, um, the finale of a movie and in some way uh, trying to capture it. And uh, there's more scratches there too. And um, that's um, sort of where that, that painting lives. And the grass is growing up. They, that means that what? Could be the end. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs>